So we're, we're going to do a little back and forth. I'll, I'll read a few poems, and then Anne's going to read some excerpts of prose, I think, tonight. Uh, she has so many amazing pieces, so we'll, um, I'm excited to hear we, we get to hear tonight. And I'll, um, I'll be sort of re doing a little smorgasbord, I think, across a couple of different um, projects and um, pools, pools of poems, I guess. Um, I thought I'd start with one. Um, that seemed appropriate for for today. Um, and this is um, this is kind of fun. It's a uh, I had a chapbook published by a press called Toad Lily Press, and they do these quartets. So um, so that I was partnered with three other people's chapbooks, and then they publish them all together. So it's kind of a lovely way. So if you're interested in this, you it's a it's a four four for one deal. Um, and this poem is called Almost Breakfast Anytime. You said it makes you wonder, and I knew just what you meant. The waitress had a shiner. You had one more cigarette. Someone said, in Wichita, and the guy in the kitchen laughed. The toast had extra butters. I stacked the half and half. Plate of pancakes, plate of eggs, water, coffee, poured in rounds. You had a watch, but we'd lost track. Why don't we skip town? But we did nothing of the kind. Cherry, jelly, valentine. Maybe, um, maybe a, 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 at a later moment, or um, <laughs> a different a different scene from that one, or recalling it. Um, this poem is called "Rogue Wave." A rogue wave of old grief capsized me at the bar. The night in my mouth had the names all wrong. Herodotus, Herodotus. My chair was upside down, but I was making it look casual. Earlier, when my glasses flew off and his glasses flew off, and they did a little orbit around each other before returning to our faces, but that was before Herodotus. Herodotus tells us human happiness never continues long in one stay. I report my old love in longhand. I report old grief in perfect sobbing penmanship. I report my flight from the bar as a series of not falling bat wing like movements. Logographers, I need you. Graffiti artists, I need you. Dancing man at the bus stop, I need you. I have staggered free of the wreck of one year. I can surely come clear of another. Pause there and switch. To end. Um, thank you, Susan, Katie, Harold, um, CNP. For, for having us, and thank you all for coming out on this um, rainy evening. Um, my favorite poem is, I, I carry a lot of poems with me, just and they get all wrinkly. I just kind of carry them in my pocket. One of them is I Carry Your Heart With Me by E.E. E. Cummings. Um, does anyone know that poem? It's kind of a tongue twister. You know, I've got one for everyone, so. Um, <laughs> um, and I'm going to read some excerpts from um, a young adult novel in progress called Hey Baby Wanna Dance. Um, a few years ago, I worked um, to um, make this novel into a play, to adapt it for a play. Still working on it. Um, things take time. But. Um, this is a story about caring hearts, and it's a story about broken hearts. And um, it's a story about a 16-year-old whose um, mother leaves the family. It's a story about a 16-year-old, the same 16-year-old who lives with her father. His name is Doc. It's a story of this 16-year-old who falls for a homophobic boy uh, named Spin um, in a love that turns pretty rough. And she tells her story in this novel um, to a court-appointed psychiatrist who proves to be a steadfast ally. So, a little bit from the beginning. My shrink is a royal thorn in the eye. All of his questions and prying and dig, dig, digging to try to get to the bottom of me. Makes me want to carve obscenities into his forehead, you know. 
with little smiley faces between them to sweeten the blow. Questions like darts, how did this make you feel, and that make you feel, and when did you first notice, and were you surprised, and who are you now, and who were you then, and who do you want to be 10 years down the road? Questions, allergic, I swear, skitters my skin like pollen, and I jam up my sleeves and jam up my pant legs and dig, dig, dig fingernails, tracks like a junkie, never known heat like this before. Questions, a real friggin' pain that winds to my heart through arteries and chambers that beg to stay locked up, curtains drawn, spidery, musty, gone fishing, which is where I want to be. Instead, it's three times a week with Siggy, in this bitty office with brown leather everything, couch and pillows, footstool, chair, table with a jade plant, picture window with accordion shades, prints of Chagall on the wall, everything tidy to a joke. Doesn't he know about the chaos theory? But really, maybe he's not all that bad, because early on it dawned on me that he'd look better in a dress, one of those slinkies, black, strapless, mid-calf. And I told him so. And I said, if you want, I'll do your hair. And I'll do your makeup. And I'll even shave your legs. Yeah, I could get into shaving his legs. Siggy laughed. And not one of those quick, fakey, let's get on with it laughs, but a watery laugh. The kind that laughs your belly and eyes. And when he pulled himself together, he said, why not? That cemented us, sort of. Siggy's about 40, but his real name is Dr. Peter Mason, not Sigmund Freud. But he doesn't mind. He doesn't hide behind a mustache and a beard like the other Siggy did, but he has a clean shaven face with a nick now and then, and once a teeny piece of toilet paper to stop the bleeding. He smells forest green like he's been hiking in the woods, and he dresses fancy. Shiny gray suit, shiny black shoes, and a bow tie that's pink, with a bunch of salmon swimming in one direction, upstream maybe, to lay eggs or die. Do you want to die, he says. And I stare at his hair, which is brownish brick and really, really short, which kind of fits its leanness, cleanness. He's down to business. Well, do you? Siggy hits the jugular, so I straighten and paste a serious face, like I'm trying to figure a physics equation, maybe the one called ice in space, where a huge trunk is at X distance from the sun, and how long will it take to evaporate? Me into an abyss where everything that ever was will never be again. Natalie, die? Maybe I do and maybe I don't, and wouldn't he like to know? Then, to steady, I cut to the real stuff, like whether he wears boxers or tidy white briefs or nothing at all beneath that chic material. X-ray girl who sees into everything, sees into everyone, all but her perforated self. Natalie, yeah, sometimes I wish he'd chuck that shovel and quit all this dig, dig, digging, lay a tablecloth instead, hot pink calico and a buttercup dune overlooking the sea, with a bag of Fritos, a Mountain Dew, and a slew of big fat cheeseburgers. Natalie, he snaps a finger and snaps the daydream and I scratch like hell, cheeks blood streaked. So I tell him the story, begin at the beginning of those 28 days, not the menstrual cycle, but the spin cycle, because that's why I'm here. Thank you.